Hello, my name is Dr. George C. Bradley, and the title of today's presentation will be on Assumptions for Factor Analysis, Understanding the Key Assumptions for Valid Factor Analysis. Let's take a look at our agenda, Introduction to Factor Analysis, Data Set, Assumptions, Summary of Assumptions, and Conclusion. Introduction to Factor Analysis. Factor Analysis is a key statistic method used to identify underlying patterns or latent variables within a set of observed variables. It aims to uncover the underlying structure or relationship among variables by reducing the data to a small, smaller set of factors that explain the correlation or covariance between the variables. Let's look at our data set here. The data set was contained, the data set contains the results of a survey of 91 teachers who were asked to indicate the degree of which they used 10 different approaches to deal with problems between themselves and the most difficult students. The scale is a full point scale. 1 equals did not try this approach to 4 equals use this approach extensively. Here are the variables. There are 10 in alphabetical order. I'll read the first two and you can read the rest. I discuss my frustration and feeling with persons at school. You would respond through 1 through 4. I try, and item B, I try to develop a step-by-step -step plan of action to remedy the problem, and you would answer it between 1 and 4. You see you have A, F, G, H, I, J, and on the actual question, you have the link here to get to the data set and the name of the data set. Let's take a look at our assumptions. Assumption 1, linearity. To test that, you will use a scattered plot. The linearity, linearity assumption refers to the assumption that the relationship among the observed variables are linear. This means that the observed variables should exhibit linear association with each other and with the underlying latent factors being investigated. Assumption two, no perfect multicollinearity, which will be tested, which will be tested using a correlation matrix. If any combination of the 10 variables have a correlation of above 0.8, that means there is multicollinearity which can affect the outcome. If there is, if we do see that, we will have to take action if that assumption is not met. Assumption three, sampling adequacy. And we use the KMO. This measuring technique is used to assess the sampling adequacy for factor analysis, it quantifies the degree to which the observed variables in the data set are suitable for factor analysis based on their intercorrelation, based on their intercorrelation. The range here is above 0.5, but I like to use above 0.6, above 0.7. Then I know I have an, action, an adequate sample size for our particular running of the factor analysis. Let's look at assumption four, factor ability. Factor ability. Factor ability refers to the extent of which observed variables in the data set are suitable for factor analysis in assessing whether the variables exhibit sufficient correlation with each other, indicating that they share common underlying factors. In other words, the fact ability determines whether the data is appropriate for extracting meaningful latent variables through factor analysis. 
the test to assess this is the Bartlett test of sphericity in SPSS. And if this test, if it is below 0 0.05, that means factability has been met. Let's look at number five, normality. Normality assumes refer normality assumption refers to the expectation that the observed variable follows appropriate normal distribution within the sample size. Normality implies that the values of the variables are systematically distributed around the means with most values clustering near the center and fewer around the tail distribution. The shape of a normal curve we will use the Shapiro-Wilkes to test normality and if the Shapiro Wilt significant level is above 0 0.05, then normality is met. Assumption six, fact analysis, and that is homoscedasticity. Fact analysis does not, does not involve modeling the relationships between variables in the same way that regression does. Instead, it focuses on explaining the covariant structure of the observed variable through a smaller number of latent factors. Therefore, the concept of homoscedasticity is not directly applicable to factor analysis. And our final assumption here for factor analysis is interval or ratio level data. Interval or ratio level data are types of quantitative data that are characterized by having equal interval between values and an absolute zero. Overall, the interval and ratio data provides the necessary properties for conducting fact analysis effectively, enabling researchers to uncover meaningful patterns and structures in their data. Testing the assumptions. Okay, we move from our PowerPoint um, to our data editor in SPSS, and we have our data here, and we have our 10 variables, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We have our 10 variables here, and we are going to analyze and test for each one of the assumptions. Let's move to the first, and that was linearity. And we'll go here, and we said scattered plots. We'll go right there, and we will use the matrix scatter. Matrix scatter. We'll go there. And we will highlight all, move it over here to matrix variables, and we will hit OK. It's running. As we can see here, we have the combination of all 10. And since these, um, the level is at the ordinal level, and you have 1 through 4, the pictorial representation here is not that great. When you have it at the interval or ratio, you'll get a better picture. So right now, I am going to say that this assumption was not met because the, the pictures are not, are not that great. Okay, let's get... Let's go to analyze. Let's go to mention reduction factor. Now, basically conducting a factor analysis, you will test for most of your assumptions. So we'll go here and we'll go there. We'll go to descriptive. I'm going to get unit variant in information, correlation matrix, core significant, determinant, 
we have the KMO and the Bartlett's test of sporicity. Very important there. And we'll do that. Let's say it's nothing that we need there. We'll move here to rotation. We don't need nothing for rotation. And at this point, we don't want to save any variables right now. And our options, we're okay right here. We're testing assumptions now. So this is the first phase of fact analysis. Okay, let's take a look. We have descriptive information right here. Let's go right here first. Let's look at um, the KMO and the KMO there is sampling adequacy and we can see that's above, above 0.7 so that's met and factability we have that as below 0 0.05 you can see this point zero zero one and the KMO is point seven one seven right here the threshold is above 0.5 strong and this the threshold here is below 0 0.05 so we got we have our we there's a met for assumption three sampling adequacy and four factability let's move here and let's take a look at multicollinearity multicollinearity we go through here we see some sixes we don't see anything above 0.8 so multicollinearity is met now let's go take a look at normality normality is one of the ones that we cannot look at the assumptions based on the fact analysis test we're going to have to go here to analyze descriptive come across explore and we'll have to highlight all of these put them independent we want to display both we're good here About the plot we're going to do the this information here click that out histogram okay I clicked out too quick on that let me go back still be there no it's not there let's try it again okay there I'm good here Okay. Okay, and I, I have everything I want in place, and I am going to hit OK. And OK, we have it. Let's go here. Okay, we have our Shapiro Wilkes, and we have all 10, and we can see with the Shapiro Wilkes, all of these are below 0 0.05, so that means none of the 10 variables met normality. None of the 10 variables met normality. Okay. okay, we have finished testing all of our assumptions. We'll look at the summary. Assumption 1, linearity, was not met. And if it's not met, we have to look at alternate techniques. If linearity cannot be reasonably assumed, you have to look at alternate data reduction and a principal component analysis and you have the others below assumption two 
multicollinearity was met. Sampling adequacy was met. Factor ability was met. Let's go here. Next slide. Normality was not met. And so when it's not met, what are, what are our options? Non-parametric methods such as principal, component analysis, or non-linear dimensionality reduction techniques may be considered. So here are some of the things that you can do if normality is not met and you're not satisfied with your findings. A lot of times when normality is not met, here is not a real big deal, but if you think if if you think it's affecting the outcome, you have other options. And remember with assumption six, the concepts of ho of homoscedasticity is not directly applicable for factor analysis. Let's take a look at our final interval or ratio level data. We have ordinal data. We have ordinal data, though, when we have the Likert scale of 1 through 4, or 4 to 1, and through 1, and that's a ordinal level. So we did not meet assumption 7, although I have used dichotic, um, dichotic level nominal levels and ordinal levels in some of the work, but this is the standard. And if for some reason you're not satisfied with the outcome, you do have alternate techniques. One is an ordinal fact analysis. If the variables are measured on an ordinal scale, which these are, ordinal fact analysis technique, such as the things that you're reading here, or options. So you have other options with principal component analysis. So you have several other options if you would like to take those up if the findings are not to your liking. By encouraging researchers to prioritize assumptions, validation, and adhere to best practices in fact analysis, we can ensure that Research findings are reliable, trustworthy, and impactful. Thank you very much. If you have any questions pertaining to this presentation, please call me at this number or email me at the email listed below.